It was originally an idea for a film, uh, which I had about 10 years ago, and I couldn't sell it as a film idea. So it kind of sat on the shelf for a while. But I really liked it, and it was the one thing that I really wanted to write when I'd finished The Tenderness of Wolves. Um, so although it wasn't anything like the same kind of setting, you know, being period and set in a cold country in winter, um, this is set in the 1980s in England. Um, this was the story that I'd, I really wanted to do. I love film noir, and for me this is kind of a, a book noir, and I hope it's got some of that kind of the atmosphere of, of classic Chandler and Hamlet. Um, but it's, it's also kind of maybe brought down to earth a bit. It starts off actually with Ray in hospital um, in quite a bad way and there seems to have been some sort of car crash but he can't remember what's happened um, and there's something quite odd wrong with him and this is one of the things we have to find out and how he's ended up in this sort of weird and rather awful position. But then, then it sort of cuts back about three months to where where the story begins and basically someone walks into his uh, office in a sort of Chandler-esque way and asks him to find his missing daughter um, and the missing daughter is a, a gypsy called Rosewood and she married into the, the Janko family and disappeared but she disappeared about seven years ago and no one's heard anything from her since so it's quite a cold trail that he's got to follow. The family, the Jankos, um, were always at the centre of the book and um, I think I've just, just had a long-term fascination with Romani Gypsy culture and probably, you know, this idea of a, a society that's, you know, it's, it's inside and outside, it's kind of in between, it's on, it's on the margins of general society and in a way it's, it's part of it but it's also outside it and it, it's quite, you get interesting things happening at the margins. I found one myth uh, from Romania, although it is known in this country, which seemed to dovetail very well with, uh, with the story, and I'll, I'll read it. Once in the land far away, the demons made war on the fairies, and the demons were winning. The king of the demons said that if the beautiful queen of the fairies agreed to marry him, he would let them live. For the good of her people, she did, but she could not bear the sight of her husband. He had to drug her before he could touch her. So, the king and the queen had nine children, but they were the most terrible children the world has ever seen, for they were demons who cause all the diseases of mankind. There was Melalo, a two-headed bird who made men mad and violent, and there was Mincescro, who caused illnesses of the blood. But the worst of all was the ninth child, Porescro. Even the king of the demons was frightened by this child. I'm not going to say why because it would give away too much of the story. You'll need to read it to find out what was so unique about the ninth child. It was a great moment when I came across it because it, there were such sort of strange parallels between it and the, and the story I was sort of developing. I wanted to think about a private investigator where you can work through their thought processes with them. And to a certain extent, you're also going through that, wondering what's happened and seeing if you can work out what's, what's going on. I mean, much as I love film noir and things like Sherlock Holmes, you know, super sleuths, uh, I couldn't imagine writing about that. I, I mean, I don't feel I have the sort of, that sort of brain. And if I was a private investigator, I think I would make mistakes. And I, I'm just more interested in someone who's quite human. And you kind of, kind of see their thought processes working from, oh, we've got this information, this bit of evidence, you know, what could this mean? Um, and he, he, he often gets it wrong. I decided to, to set the novel in the 80s um, for, for two reasons, I think. Uh, the first one was a story reason, which is that um, in the 80s there was no widely used internet and we didn't have mobile phones, uh, which I felt would sort of compromise the story and that things would, would maybe happen too quickly or, or things would be found out too quickly. And I also, I didn't want the characters communicating too easily. Yeah, the second reason was, uh, was more personal. Um, and I grew up in the 80s and uh, it meant that I could give JJ some of my musical preferences. Uh, so he's a big Smiths fan. In 
initially I thought, oh, this won't be as much research as doing a historical novel. Um, uh, and that was completely wrong, actually. It was at least as much, uh, if not more, of me sort of different in some ways. But yes, lots of research over over that sort of 10 year period, <laughs> on and off. But I, th I think research is always best once it's kind of composted a bit, you know, you know, so you can't actually see what was origin you know, the original components. You just digest it and leave it. And then, and then you're kind of left hopefully with what's really germane to the story.